then again with Coyote Outdoors here. Um, I'm going to do a couple part series here on my uh, bug out bags that I have. I've got four specific bags. Well, three bags in a vehicle. Um, and each one of them kind of goes up a step. I consider this like bag one. Um, this is my get home bag. This is the one I carry in my vehicle at all times. Um, with this one, I, like my get home bag here, um, I kind of built it around, I know like all the average areas that I go to, my furthest destination being my work, which is 15 miles away. And I estimate to walk 15 miles. I could do that comfortably in one day. I know I can. Um, I've done mountain hikes over 20 miles in one day, so I know I could do 15 in a day comfortably. But what I did is I pretty much took the idea of, okay, I know it's going to take me one day to get home, so let's double that. And I set my bag up for two days. It's not a long time, but honestly, 15 miles, I could walk home as long as it's not blazing heat in the dead of summer or the freezing winter, I, I could walk home comfortably in a day with, with no supplies. But you never want to go into a situation thinking like that because you know, there's a million different things that could happen while you're away from home. So I've put together this, it's, it's pretty inclusive kit, but it's pretty basic compared to some of my, some of my other setups as to what all is in here. and. A lot of it I would consider more comfort items than anything because I know for a fact that I could survive on my own with really nothing more than a pocket knife. I've done years of studying, I've done years of practical exercises, I've taken out I've taken survival courses and outdoor courses from experts and uh, and I've been doing this for about 15 years now planning and building and training and it's like I used to carry a survival book in here because there's a lot of good information in a lot of those books there's a little quarter size book but I've read those books so many times that a, a lot of it is memorized and that's really the best thing that you could hope for you, they can't take away your your knowledge so I think your, your your best thing to do is just learn as much as you possibly can and memorize it go out and practice it and practice it and practice it I've gone out and practiced 10, 15 different ways to build a fire out of almost nothing. And I've got myself till I'm really, really proficient at three or four of those methods. And that's what you got to do. Um, I've practiced and gotten proficient at building shelters. I've got practiced and got proficient at capturing my own food. And that's the kind of stuff you really have to do. A survival bag is secondary to your knowledge. The survival bag, all it does is supplement your knowledge. Like I said, most of this I consider a comfort item over an actual survival item, especially when it comes to only a one or two day scenario. Now, when you start talking longer and longer and longer scenarios, three days a week, a month, then yeah, a lot more items become absolutely essential. But when you're only talking a couple of days, and like I said, the furthest distance I travel on average is only 15 miles to work. I mean, you start looking at my dad's house is only 12 miles away. My mom's house is only two and a half miles away. You just start looking at stuff and you're like, okay, I just need to set my bag up for about a two-day scenario. And that, that varies for everybody. I know, I, have, I know people I work with who work 60 miles from home, and a 60-mile trek is... A four, five, six day event for most people. I read in a survival manual years ago that an average person can travel 10 miles per day comfortably. And that's a loose average, I think, because like I said, I know for a fact I can travel double that in a day without a problem. But on the flip side, my mother, on the other hand, who's over 50 years old, could probably do 10 miles comfortably in a day. Um, my sister, who would be dragging three kids along with her, might only be able to do five miles in a day. So you've got to take that kind of stuff into account. But it's just me and maybe my wife, and we're both avid outdoorsmen and, and hikers and stuff. So, you know, long distances aren't an issue. But 
So I'll start with some of the stuff on the outside of the bag. Some of this stuff is just, I put there because I, I think it's convenient and I might need it the quickest. Like, I've got my Surefire light here uh, on the outside of the bag. I've got an easy to get to flint fire starter. So just, just a couple of quick easy things and they fit on the outside of the bag real nice. If you turn over to this side, I've got what they call ranger beads. These are for uh, tracking your steps, how much distance you traveled. Um, the way I do it is I count off each one of these is 100 steps. And there's 10 of them on here. And I know about 1,000 steps. For me, that's, uh, that's pretty close to a mile, give or take a few steps, you know. So that's uh that's what those are for and then on the up here each one of these you cross off not a mile i do apologize a kilometer it's not a mile that's a correction it's a, it's a kilometer and then uh and then each one of these there's four of them up here so that would be four kilometers and then that would be how you could keep track i don't know if that's how everybody uses them that's how i use them that's the general gist of how i use them it's really easy it's just some beads on some paracord um, the bag itself is just your average um, military style backpack. You can get these everywhere at any survival store. Even the Walmart by my house has them. Um, I paid about $60 for mine. Mine's a higher quality Maxpedition one. But uh, you can get these as cheap as like $20 online. Um, a lot of people say you want to go with the gray man scenario. You don't want people to stand out because you don't want to have a military style bag. It makes you a target. In a way, I do and I don't believe that. In my area here, tons of people have these bags. I mean, you go to the mall on a weekend and you're bound to see three or four of them with just average people carrying them around. So I, I don't think they make you a target like some people do. I mean, maybe some of the accessories hanging on the outside might make you more of a target, but the bag itself... I just don't believe that as much as I would have, you know, five, ten years ago. Um, but like I said, this one stays in my vehicle at all times. It goes in my Jeep. And I've had to do some custom things in this bag, because, like, my wife's from Canada, so I've got to go to Canada every now and then. So I made sure that everything in this bag was Canadian laws compliant, because there's a lot of stuff you can have here where I'm at in Michigan that you cannot have in Canada, like an automatic knife, pepper spray... Um, certain lengths of fixed blade knives, I think it's anything over three and a half inches, you can't have as a fixed blade knife on you. So I've kind of built that bag with that in mind too. Because of that, I don't have an, I don't have a, a my uh, concealed carry in here. Um, I do have a concealed carry, but I don't keep it in the bag like I know a lot of people do. I've met quite a few people who keep one in their get home bags or their bug out bags. I don't because this one stays in my vehicle at all times and I never know when I'm going to have to go to Canada. Um, but to get into that, let's get into what's in this bag. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here that you're going to see as double, triple, and quad, quadruple redundant. Um, I kind of go by the mindset of if you have one, you have none. If you have two, you have one. So I've got three and four different ways to start a fire. I've got two and three different ways to purify water. I've got two different, I think two, maybe three different ways to cook food in here, two ways for sure to cook food in here. Um, and I've even got a couple different selections of food. But let's get into this and uh, I'll pull everything out one at a time and I'll show you what it is. And I'll explain why I have it in the bag. Like I said, some of the stuff's redundant and, and you'll see that, but uh, let's get into what's in here. Okay, so getting into the bag, I'll start what's in this front pocket. This front little pocket right here, I keep items that I'm going to grab immediately and stick right into my pockets. And I do that just in case for some reason I lose the entire bag, I get chased, um, I get hurt, something happens, I lose the entire bag. These few items will always be in my pockets and it's just some of the basics here. Now I always carry a Leatherman on me, I'll do a video on that later, so um, I always have my Leatherman, but some of the things I keep is just a simple lighter, just a regular Bic lighter, a charcoal water purification straw, I just have it here in a Ziploc bag, um, just to keep it a little more organized. 
I have a regular fire striker, flint fire striker, fire steel. Um, these are real nice. Again, cheap. I, I bought four of these online for I think five dollars. And you can see I, I've used I've used this one quite a bit. This they work really really well. That's something that I've made sure I was very very proficient in using. That's what I'm saying. Knowledge, knowledge is power. I've just got a regular folding knife here, one that's comfortable that fits in my hand. Nothing too exciting. Um, I keep it sharp. It's a higher quality one. I paid twenty dollars for it, um, but I keep that in there. And then I have just a regular stream light pocket flashlight. Runs on two AAA batteries, which I have backups for in the main bag. I have a couple uses for those AAA batteries. Um, Twenty dollars online. You can't really beat it for the brightness. I use these at work all the time. I love them. Um, so that's what's in this front pocket, along with this. It's just a little pouch I made, and all it's got in it is some little bitty fire strikers. You just put a spark to them, they catch and they burn. Um, those are kind of the go in conjunction with the uh, fire steel here. Uh, those work really, really good. Um, the next pocket we'll move on to here is the other front pocket. Um, we'll open this up. And here, let me just lay this down. I've got uh, 50 foot of paracord, titan cord. It comes nicely wrapped up in this little batch. Um, paracord has a million and one uses. I can't even tell you how many things you can use it for. Great item to have in a, a bag. Um, also here I've got a pocket chainsaw. I have several of these because I really like them. I have one in every one of my bug out bags. I keep one in the back pouch of my truck. And this is something I've practiced with. Now I have found these do take a little bit of practice to get used to. Um, so if you're going to buy one, they're cheap. Buy two or three of them and go wear one of them out playing with it. Um, because they, I, I do find that they, they do take a little bit of practice. And I find that I can get 20 to 30 decent cuts with one before I notice it's starting to get dull. And for just a regular bug out bag, 20 to 30 cuts is plenty. And it comes in these nice little tins. This is just a pocket chainsaw. And like I said, you can get them on Amazon or eBay for next to nothing. Next I have these little Tinder ones. I actually got this out of my battle box. I'm a subscriber to battle boxes. I really like them. You'll see a couple items in here I've got from battle box. This is one of them. This is a zombie Tinder. It's in a waterproof container. And if you open it up here, it's got some instructions and just some little wax fire starters. You peel them apart, strike them with a, with a match or a flint steel, fire steel, and they'll, they catch right up. But I said fire is one of the things you'll see. I've got, I think I've probably got about eight different options in here for because I think it's important. It's important for morale. It's important for cooking. It's important for um, just survival in general, keeping animals away, all, all kinds of different stuff. I, so I've got lots of different f forms of fire starter. Um, I've also got a bottle of insect repellent here. Um, anybody from Michigan knows especially in the summer the mosquitoes here are absolutely horrific. This is a must. If I could get rid of something I, I would to, to keep my, uh, my buck spray. Um, and that's it for that pocket. Not a lot in there. Like I said, overall I don't carry a ton in this bag. So, move on to the next biggest pocket here. That's one of the reasons I like this bag. These pockets open up big and they open up really quick. First thing I've got here is just a little water purification kit. Again, it's got a charcoal straw and a syringe and a tube and a collapsible water bottle. And they all work in conjunction with each other for purifying your water. I apologize if you can hear my cat in the background. She's uh, having a fit about something. Um, next I have is a, it's called the Massive Wipe. Just a wipe to clean yourself off with um, if you get dirty, muddy. That's just a comfort item in here for me. Then I have an emergency blanket. Um, I think these are invaluable. I have used these several times. You can tell this one's been in my bag for a while. It's all good and mushed up, but once you unfold them, they never go back right. So don't unfold these unless you plan on using it. But I have used these on several different occasions during some of the overnight camping trips that I've done. 
and I find they work really, really well. And for their size, space, and cost, they're they're great. Then here I got a pair of medical shears. These also came in battle box. Like I said, I have a few of those items. Million and one uses for these. They cut great. This is another thing I have in every one of my bags is a, is a pair of shears. Two glow sticks, lots of different uses. I got a yellow and a blue for signaling, for lighting, uh, marking a trail, million different uses for some glow sticks right there. Um, next I have a trauma bag. Trauma bag, geez, a trauma um, dressing. If you were to get hurt, you can wrap it up in this. Something like this I think is a must. A lot of guys keep tourniquets in their uh, bags. I do have a tourniquet in my big bug out bag, not in this one, and that was just because of range of home and everything. I just didn't feel like it was something that was absolutely necessary, but I got a trauma bandage here. And here is like my cleansliness kit slash um, kind of a first aid kit. There's a, there's a couple different random things in here I'll go over. Not, not too much stuff, but... I got these little dissolving, uh, there's a shampoo, and there is a um, soap. You get them at like the Coleman store. I think I got that at the Coleman store. This I got at just like a regular outdoor store. But they uh, they dissolve in your hands instantly, which is a tiny bit of water. You scrub up, they work great. Um, I got some towel tablets here. Um, couple of unlubricated condoms. You can see those are also battle box condoms. Again, a million and one uses for condoms. Look it up if you don't know any. There is some water purification tablets. Now that's my third source of water purification because water is very important. You're always three days from death if you don't have water. So there's my third form of water purification. And then I've also just got some loose, just some loose band-aids in here. Some burn ointment. Um, uh, that's really about it that's in there. Just something just something to keep home. And I keep all that stuff in a watertight Ziploc bag because I don't want any of that getting wet. And then I also have a portable mess kit here made by uh, Wildo, or Waldo, however you want to pronounce it. It's got an eating tray, another little cutting tray slash colander, got a fork. Here is my, what, fourth or fifth form of fire starting. I keep it in this kit. It's an uh, easy strike. You just push your thumb here, push it down, and it creates a hell of a spark. It's a great little item. It fits one I've used a lot. You can tell it's got a lot of wear on it. This one can be used with one hand. Pretty important, again, if you were to get injured, or even if you are just to pass this on to somebody who you're trying to survive with who doesn't can't use a regular fire starter has a hard time with it. This one works great. This one is, uh, I'll have to look it up. I'll put it in the description. I can't remember the brand name on it. But I've got a wet fire in here. Um, you can cook with wet fire. I mean, this stuff will burn on top of water. A few little shavings of this off with your knife and strike it with your striker. It lights up. It burns great. I've got a couple of these in my pack. I really like wet fires. I've used them a lot. Um, another bottle of water purification tablets. And then in here's a little spice tray. It's got some salt, pepper, some other stuff, and then a couple collapsible cups, and then it's all set into another mess tray. So that's what's in there. Also in this pocket, there's a little pocket on the inside here. I keep a knife sharpener, outdoor edge, nothing too exciting. That's what this knife is too, by the way. The emblems fell off, but this is an outdoor edge knife too. Um, not too exciting, but it's nice to have a knife sharpener. And I've also got a Silcock key. This is something everybody should have in all of their bug out bags. Uh, Silcock key is really, really important. This allows you to get water from a million different sources. If you pay attention to like fast food restaurants or the outsides of Home Depots, Walmarts, whatever it is, anywhere they have a water spout, you always see the handles missing and it's got a little square drive. That's what this is. It's got a couple different size square drives on it. You can walk up to any one of those faucets, stick this in, turn it on, and you've got water. For its weight, its size, and you can get them for as cheap as $5 online. I think I paid about $15 for this one. You, you can't beat them. I, I suggest a sil Silcock key to everybody. So now we're going to move into my main pocket. That was it for this pocket, yeah. So now we're going to move into my main pocket. Go down one more layer. 
This one's got some more of the more interesting stuff in it. If I open it up, first thing right here in this front, I've got a dust mask, a collapsible dust mask. Real small, real light. Um, pretty invaluable, I think, to have. And here I've also just got a regular Energizer light. This is actually a light off my hard hat. It's got red and clear or white. And I really, I just really like the thing. It runs off one AAA battery. They're made by Energizer. I bought two of them. And I ended up never using them on my hard hat at work. I threw one in this in this bag and one in my big bug out bag because I, I really, really like them. They're small. So that's actually my second source of flashlight power. Which, like I said, they, everything in my kit runs on AAA batteries for the reason everything would be interchangeable. Next I have, this is a Bushnell Backtrack GPS. Um, this isn't a GPS in a, in a standard sense. This is a, it's called a backtrack because what you do is, I don't have the batteries in it, I don't store the batteries in it. I keep an extra pack of batteries right here again, AAA batteries. Um, this Bushnell Backtracker is pretty cool. If you were to go off the beaten path, you turn it on, you pretty much click the track button right here and it marks your mark. And then you can walk anywhere you want in the world. Then when you want to go home, all you got to do is click and there's a little arrow that shows up on the screen. You hold it out in front of you and it points you back to your original location. This thing works great. I've actually used this like it when we go down to amusement parks and stuff and you want to find your way back to your car, track yourself to your the, the main gate. Then when you get out, just click start and there's no wandering around for now. This tracks back to within 10 feet of your original location. I've also used this backpacking like when we go up into Alaska and stuff and we get out onto some pretty crazy trails up there that aren't always defined. I think this is an invaluable tool. It'll run for up to 48 hours with the AAA batteries in it. And that's 48 hours powered on. It'll last a long time with it powered off. But as long as you don't get too crazy far out into the woods, 48 hours is plenty. They said Bushnell Backtrack GPS. You can have these for less than $50 online. Um, another fire starter kit. It's got a, a blow rod, a fire steel, and some tinder in there and a little waterproof container. That's like what my fifth or sixth fire starting source. Um, I've got just a, a decent little fixed blade knife that I picked up made by Frost Cutlery. It's a real sharp knife. It's fixed blade. It's got a good grip on it. Full tang which I think is important in a good fixed blade knife. It's a good size, and more importantly, like I said, it's legal in Canada, so no one's ever going to give me a hard time about this being in there. Um, it's got a steel butt plate on it for striking, and it's got a real thick spine if you wanted to um, baton something to, like, split wood. And I think it's a real good size for just my, for my get-home bag. Um, and again, I got this online for, I want to say... 20 25 dollars you know a lot of people out there they go out and they spend two three four hundred dollars on a knife when i believe that's true like my everyday carry knife and my leatherman i spend a lot of money on but when it's something in a bug out bag like this that may never get used and if it does get used it'll get used once something that's rugged and doable i think is all you'll ever need and i think this knife fits that bill also got a collapsible water jug here. Nothing too crazy. If I can get it open for you here, I will uh, try to. There it goes. Just a little one quart collapsible water jug. Um, I've got a monocle. Um, I keep that in there for multiple different reasons. One, you know, you can check the road ahead up on you. If something is um, suspicious or something you can check it out with a lot more detail I like this one again I got this one in a battle box I had a smaller one in here that was about half this size but this one is a 16 to 52 and my other one was only a uh, 9 by 20 I think it was so this one's a little bigger it's got a little more zoom on it and I've tested this a day and night and it works really good in both scenarios like my smaller one it, it didn't work as good at night I found so I keep that in there for that purpose. Um, and I got a little fold-up towel here. It goes in this little bag. 
That was a pretty nifty little thing. I like it for like wiping sweat or bugs or anything off your face while you're backpacking. And it's got a little clip here to clip on your pants or your bag. Nothing too exciting. Um, as much of this stuff I can find online, I'll put in the description. Next, I've got a camo net. You know, if you got a bug, if you got to hunker down for the night or whatever, you can throw this over yourself or your bag, um, and uh, just try to hide out a little bit. Um, it's also pretty effective for keeping bugs off. It's got a really big mesh on it, so like mosquitoes will get in there, but it keeps things like bees and wasps and beetles and you know that kind of stuff off here, which is pretty nice. Next, I've got you guys are going to murder me online for this, but it's like a magog or whatever. It's a it's a scarf. I love these. I got I keep them in everything. They open up really really big. They're great for wrapping up your head. Wrapping up your bag. If it's cold out, you can wrap your face in it to stay warm. It's it's green and black, so it's camouflage colors. Um, you can use it for wiping yourself off, using it as a towel. There's a million and one uses for these, and there's actually books online that just people, it's just entire books of different ways to use these. I keep one in every bag that I have. I have one in my work bag, my bug out bag, my get home bag. I have one in the center console of my Jeep. I, I use them for so much stuff. And they wash easy and they're really durable. So I highly recommend putting... Alright, sorry about that skip right there. I had a uh, battery failure. But uh, I keep a couple things food-wise in the bag. Like I said, this is only designed for a two-day two bag here. Here I've got a cherry energy bar. Something that's high in sugar, high in caloric intake to keep you going. You can eat that while you're walking down the road. Um, and they taste really good. I've ate a couple of these. Um, next I've got these. These are from MRE pouches. I ordered them online. Uh, they only pay a couple dollars a piece for them. They're shelf stable. They last for years. Um, I've got a Pinto bean and ham menu number two. And a chicken noodle number two. Um, I'm weird. I'm like most people. I really like a lot of the food that comes out of MREs. Um, I first was introduced to them when I was in the Air Force. I mean, it's a lot later than most people. I was like 18. And oh, for the exception of a couple of the menus, I really like them. So I, I carry a couple of these around. Also, I have an MRE, you know, kit here with, uh, you know, lemon flavor drink. You know, your accessory kit that comes in an MRE. Um, next, I'll pull out the big one. This is a... Um, hatchet slash tomahawk. Um, this is a custom made kydex sheath that I made for it. And it's got quite a bit of paracord laced into it. You just give it a pull and you can see I've actually got quite a bit of use on it. need to clean that up a little bit actually. But uh, this is made by Estwing. I got it at Home Depot for I think it was $40. I really like this thing. It holds an edge really really well you know for chopping or splitting some self-defense if you need it. It's got the spike on the back here. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it is it came with a really cheap, you know, plasticky mesh sheath. So, got out the good old Kydex. There we go. I made a custom Kydex sheath for it. Kind of acts like a carry handle. Um, I really like this thing. Again, it's important that it's, it's legal in just about everywhere that I could come across it because it is just just a hatchet. Um, next I got some simple things. Change of underwear. Thinks very important. Change of socks. I also think are very important when you're walking home. And then in this back pouch here, just a couple simple more things. A little shredder for making tinder for starting fires. Then I've also got an S-bit stove here with a few Opens up with a few of those wet fires in there. Like I said, those wet fires burn for a long time and they burn hot. Just a little espit stove for cooking. Here I've got a little can opener, bottle opener, screwdriver, combo kit kind of thing. A little bit more paracord with a uh, carabiner clip with an uh, adjuster on it. Good old trusty P38 can opener. And that's it. Like I said, I mean, it does look like a lot of stuff, but it's really not when you consider some of the other bags that I have. 
And like I said, a lot of this is comfort items. I would make it home on a two-day hike without using 90% of this. I mean, honestly, I probably wouldn't get in past the food. But it's nice to have if you need it. Um, and that's something else I should actually go into. To get a good knowledge of your surrounding area where streams, rivers, lakes are, food sources like fish, small game, and even some of the edible plants in your area. Um, I'm pretty good here in Michigan. I'm halfway decent in Alaska because we go there a lot. Um, outside of that, I'll admit, I'm kind of rusty. I would probably need to bring a book around with me. And I do actually have a couple little things that if I knew I was going out of town, I would bring. Like I do have an edible plants guide. I do have a big bandana that shows different edible plants and stuff in the area too I could shove in my bag if I know I'm going out of town. And I have a couple things specific area like west coast, east coast, you know, desert. You know, that's stuff I could change out on a basis of when I was, what I was doing and what I was doing. But that's a pretty basic what I have in my get home bag. Um, some of these things also change depending on the season. Right now we're in winter slash fall and I go to work every day with a hoodie and a Carhartt, flannel pants, my hiking shoes and uh, so I don't think I would really need much more outside of a, maybe a change of underwear, a change of socks if something were to get wet. Um, and this, um, sometimes I will throw a, just a flannel shirt in here if, I, if it's really really getting cold out just for a little bit for another extra layer. But in the summertime, you wouldn't see much more than this in here because summers are, are pretty temperate around here. But if you have any questions or anything, um, comment, like. If you think I did something wrong here or you like what I did, let me know. Um, like I said, I built my pack out of items I'm familiar with, and that's something you should do too. Everything you see on this table, even though some of it's new, it's never been opened, I have used everything that I have here and I've used it multiple times to make sure that I understand how to use it. Like the fire starters and the water purifiers and that kind of stuff. And that, that's that's mainly what you want. But said, like, comment, share. Thank you. This is Coyote Outdoors. You guys have a great night.